All right, today is, I've been in a series on transitions, and today I think, somebody say I think. He thinks. I think today's going to be the last day, unless the Lord tells me something else, but this is my last Sunday. I want to talk about transitions, and I believe that God is opening up doors and making transitions. This is the season and the time. But there is a risk that if you are not aware that you are in the midst of a transition, that you might miss it. And what I want to do is talk about recognizing when you're in a season of transition. That's what this message is about, recognizing the season of transition. How do you know when you are in a season of transitions? In the course of my life, I've always looked for indicators and uh, moments when God moved me from one place to another. The children of Israel, when God brought them out of slavery to take them to the promised land, went through several transitions. They went through transitions because God gave them clear direction. They had a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And so whenever the clouds would move, they would move. So if the cloud of, uh, the pillar of a cloud by day moved in the day, they'd pack up everything and they'd follow the cloud is what they did. If, if it was in the middle of the night, they would get up in the middle of the night, they'd wake up everybody and they'd follow the cloud. And that's the kind of people you want, we want to be. That's the kind of person you want to be. That you want to go wherever God's leading you to go. <clears throat> I'm afraid that a number of you have missed seasons of transition because you didn't recognize that God was trying to make a move, move you from one location to another. The last thing you want to do in life is miss being where God wants you to be. T tell your neighbor, you don't want to miss where God wants you to be. <laughs> That's what I want to do, be in the center of God's will for my life. And whenever he wants me to move, I want to be prepared and able and in a position to move. In our text today, 1 Kings chapter 17 is where I'm taking most of my passages from today. Uh, Elijah uh, is in seasons of transition in his life. God's moving him from one place to another. And in the midst of this 17th chapter are a couple of indicators of how he knew God was leading him to move from one location to the other. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to give you some clear ways of recognizing that God is seeking to move you from one location to another. Let me, let me just ask you to open your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 17. And it says this in verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, now get this, Elijah the Tishbite goes to the king, Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except my word. He gave him a word. God told him, uh, and Elijah went to the king and said, it's not going to rain until I tell you. And it's, in fact, is we, we know that it was three and a half years that it took before it rained again. Three and a half years. So they were in the middle of a drought. And then verse 2, here's verse 2. It says, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Stick a pen right in verse number 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying... There's the first indication that God wants to move you from one location to another is God will talk to you. Thank all five of y'all for that rousing amen. I want y'all to hear me on this because this is very, very important for your future. God will give you a clear word. Now, somebody said, well, I didn't hear it. It's not because God ain't talking. If you didn't hear it, it's not because God is not talking. God is always talking. The question is, are you dull of hearing? Is your ears plugged up? Because the problem is, many of you, are, you, you, your life is so full of other stuff that you can't even hear when God's talking to you. You, you, you so tuned in to whatever, the, what are the shows are that y'all watch on TV? What shows y'all watch? What, what, what are these? Oh, now y'all gonna act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Tim, thank you. What, what? 
baby shells? I don't know. Huh? What shells you? Huh? Man, why y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about? Grey's Anatomy. Thank you, ma'am. Grey's Anatomy is one. What else y'all? You know what? Huh? Housewives of whatever. Housewives of... Let me go over here to this side over here. We're, we're full of watching the wrong things, listening to the wrong things, reading the wrong things. We're full of the music that we're listening to, the shows on television, the books and the novels that we read. We're so full of that we can't hear from God. Now, I told the earlier service at 9 o'clock that I, used, I had to put some stuff down. I had to be honest with y'all. I know y'all think I'm super spiritual and I just sleep with Jesus every day and I just... I just I had to put some stuff down. I had to put my favorite music group of all time down. I had to put the Temptations down. I loved the Temptations. And I couldn't hear from God because I kept hearing David Ruffin's name, voice in my head. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, to put it down because I couldn't hear God because I kept hearing David in my head. Now at the nine o'clock service, I sung, I wish it would rain. But them young jokers over there didn't know that song. I guess if I had sung some Snoop Dogg or some Beyonce, they might know that. But what, you got to ask yourself the question, what is it that's blocking you from hearing from God? You got to ask yourself, what is prohibiting you from being able to hear God's voice, com communicate clearly, because it's not an issue of whether God's talking, because God is talking. Matter of fact, not only did it say in verse 2, the word of the Lord came to him saying, God gave him clear direction. Look at verse number 8. Then verse 8 says the same thing. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, the word of the Lord came to him saying, God speaks to us. He wants you to be clear. When he wants to move you from one place to another, from one dimension of life to another, when he wants to move you from where you are today to where he wants you to be, he will communicate with you. Somebody tell your neighbor, he's communicating with you. Now, the devil's goal is to get you confused, to block your hearing, to make you doubt, make you question God. The devil's goal is to make you miss out on what God is telling you to do and miss out on where God's trying to take you. The thing I'm trying to tell everybody is that God loves you, that he has a future and a destiny and assignment and a purpose and a goal of where he's trying to get you to. All of life, God's trying to get you to a particular place at a particular time. And I've learned in the course of my life that I got to be at the right place at the right time because I'm not at the right place at the right time. I might miss a connection. I might miss a relationship. I might miss a job assignment. I might miss something that I'm supposed to do that's going to take me to where I'm supposed to be. And every new assignment prepares you for the next assignment that then takes you to the next assignment and I don't want to miss out. I got to stay in communion with God. Somebody tell your neighbor, you got to stay in connection and communion with God. That's why church is important. That's why being in the Word is important. That's why right relationships are important because it keeps you in a place and a posture of being able to go from one dimension of life to another dimension of life, from one place to another. But some of you have become satisfied with mediocrity. You become content with being less than. I don't want to be in no place but in the perfect will of what God has for me and my life. You don't have to stay where you are. God can take you to a new place and another place. Tell you, can you just tell the person next to you he's talking to you?
So you identify transitions and you know and you recognize them because God speaks to you. God tells you he wants you to do something. That, that's the first thing. Here's number two, God tells you. You recognize transition because God provides. Recognize God provides. Somebody say he provides. He provides. Say it one more time. If, when God wants you to go from one location to another, he provides. He gives you provision. Now, this is an important deal because God gives you resources. He gives you what it takes to go to the next place. God never takes you someplace where he has not given you provisions for you to go to that place. Thank you. I got three hand claps right there. Appreciate it. Now, why am I saying that? Because I'm tired of hearing people talk about they feel the Lord leading them to quit their job. I don't want another person to come up to tell me that they're going to quit their job and they don't have another job. That's not God. I feel tension in the room. Don't jump off a moving horse until another horse comes by. Don't, don't, don't leave the provisions God has made for you until he makes more provisions. I know you want to start a business. I know you want to do something great and fantastic that you hear the Lord telling you to quit your job. So, let me tell you something. If you feel God leading you to do something, great. I'm, there's no doubt. I'm sure God told you to start your business. But don't start that business. Don't quit your job to start that business. Keep, listen, don't clap. Wait till I finish. Keep your day job and work your vision job part-time. <laughs> and when the part-time thing that you feel God's leading you to do to make you become such a great person and do great things, when God works that out for you so that you have the ability to quit your job, that's when you quit, when the money you're making on the part-time job is surpassing the money that you're making on your full-time job. Recognize transition when God gives provision. Where God gives vision, he gives provision. That was good. Write that down. Say that. Where God gives vision, he gives provision. Years ago, years ago, when I wanted to be in full-time ministry, I contemplate, and I, and I had a good government job. I wanted to quit my job and become a full-time minister. <laughs> so I gave a fleece. I told God, I'm going to preach at this church in New Jersey. Lord, if they give me $500, I'm going to quit my job. That's going to be the sign. So I went to this church in New Jersey. I preached. They gave me $496. <laughs> I was horrified. Because I had a wife and kids. And I had told God, if, I, if they gave me $500, I'm going to quit my job. And I would have quit that job if they, if they had taken up four more dollars. I would have quit my job. I think we had two or three kids. I, I didn't know it was four more children coming. I would have quit my job and had no health insurance or any of that. That would have been, that would have been drastic. God had to hold, I could have, God, if I hadn't prayed that little stupid prayer, I could have got a thousand dollars that day. I'm talking to somebody here today. I feel. I feel pushback in my spirit with some people who don't believe that or don't understand that. All I'm trying to tell you is if God has given you a vision, he will also give you provisions for you to be able to do what it is that you feel he wants you to do. Don't quit. Tell your neighbor, don't quit your day job. I mean, tell them with, tell them with that little extra thing on y'all's neck and tell them, don't quit your job. 
Wait until a faster horse comes rolling by. God, where God gives vision, he gives provision. If he wants you to do it, he will make a way for you to be able to do that. A sign and the evidence that God is leading you to do something is he will make provisions for you to be able to do it. Matter of fact, look at verse number four. Let me talk about this provision thing, verse four. Let me read verse 3, it goes along with it. Let me read verse 2, it goes along with it too. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Jordan, hide by the brook, it says. And verse 4, And if it will be that you shall drink, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Stick a pen right there, stop for just a moment. God gave him a vision and provision. And the provision was there's a brook there for you to drink from. Now, granted, don't forget, this is in the middle of a drought. Didn't rain for three and a half years. And in the midst of that drought, he had a a brook to drink from. Are y'all listening to me? He had a brook to drink from. And he says, and he says, I have commanded the ravens to feed you. That's a profound point too. You know what's profound about that? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, Lord have mercy. Ravens are scavengers. Ravens are scavengers. That means they, they take from others for themselves. They eat what's dead. They take what somebody else killed and consume it themselves. They're scavengers. But here's what God says. I'm, he, said, he said right here in verse number Number four, he says, I have commanded the ravens to feed you. What does that mean, Pastor? It means that God shifted the nature of the ravens to take care of Elijah. Somebody need to hear that God will shift the nature of some people who normally would take from you and cause them to give to you. I wish I had a praying crowd with me here today. Anybody here ever experienced God working out somebody who would have taken from you, hurt you, damaged you, but God shifted their mindset and shifted their heart and they start giving to you? I love that right there. Ooh, 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 that's powerful. That's profound. That's important. Somebody say, that's important. It's profound. God, God will shift nature. Look at verse number, look at verse number 89. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, verse 89, verse 89, the word of the Lord came to him, again to Elijah, saying, arise, verse 9, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Here's a, wo- a woman, a widow, who's who when Elijah comes upon her, she's, he said, give me something to drink. Give me a, make a sandwich for me. She said, all I have is enough for me and my son, and I'm about to fix this meal for me and my son, and we're going to go eat that last meal and die. He said, make me a sandwich of sandwich first. And she did. Her nature would have been not to give it to this strange man, but she shifted her mindset from giving to her son and giving it to him. And guess what? God worked it out that every time she went back to the barrel, there was always something in it. Who am I preaching to today? This is a significant point and a significant insight and a significant word for you to understand that God can shift people's minds and shift your company's posture and shift how they normally would do things and shift the way they're organized and shift the assignment of the job and change things just for you. God will make provisions just for you. He will open a door just for you. He will create a job just for you. He'll make a way just for you. Go to preach, Pastor. I'm doing the best that I can. He'll do it just for you. Somebody look at yourself and he'll do it just for me. That's how much he loves you. He will do it just for you. Provisions. 
Now, I, I forgot this part in verse, I forgot to, to, in the first service to say this, so this is something I forgot to say. I need to say this. Uh, verse 6 says, uh, let me read verse 5. Let me read verse 4. <laughs> and it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Shereth, which flows into the Jordan. Y'all see that? The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Oh, that's so good right there. That he drank from the brook and the ravens shifted their nature. But here's another indication that God is tra transitioning him. Verse 7. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up. Ooh, I forgot to say that this, the, this, was, this verse 7 is the whole reason I wanted to talk about this message today because God gave me verse 7 and I, I forgot to say it at the 9 o'clock service. I got to go back to the 9, we got to, y'all got to go out, I got to go get the 9 o'clock people back in here because I forgot to tell them. One of the ways that you know it's time for a shift that where you are dries up. When where you are dries up, it means it's time to move on. It's time to make a change. We are the men. We can do it. Time, time to make a change. We are the men. We can do it. When the brook dries up, don't fret. You get fired from your job, it's okay. It just means God got something better for you. When you don't have the grace or the anointing to do what you used to do, it just means it's time for a change. When you can't get up and get excited about what you're doing no more, it's time. Time to make a change. It's time. Look at me say, it's time. Now, now I want to be clear. The brook dried up. That's what it says, the brook, the brook, it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no, no rain and the brook dried up. And so uh, opportunities might dry up. You, the grace to do something might dry up. It's time to transition. Now I know I got one more building in me in this church. One more building. I got one more building to build. And then it's time. It's time for me to change. And whether y'all like it or not, I'm retiring. Got one more building. After that, I ain't got no more grace for it. I love y'all. Appreciate it. Y'all been good to me. Y'all been very, very good to me. But it's time to make a change. Y'all got to get a younger pastor. I don't know how. I, I can't. I don't know how to relate to the young people. Yeah. I'm, look. Look around you. It's all old people here. Look around. There ain't never old people in here. 
Where the young people? Where the young people at? Stand up. Wait a minute. It ain't time for me to change. Hold up. Some of y'all are delusion, delusion. I got one more thing, then I'll be finished. Uh, here's, did y'all get the first two points? What was the first one? A word, number two? Pro- provisions. Now let's go to Proverbs 18. Give me this last, and then I'll be finished. Proverbs 18. And I'm going to read verse 16, and I'll be finished. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Opportunity. Transition provides opportunity. God opens up the door of opportunity. And one of the things I tell people who feel they're called to ministry that the scripture says, here's what verse... 16 of chapter 18 of Proverbs says, a man's gifts make room for him. Not a man's license. Some, of, some people think that before you can preach, you have to have a license. No, that's not what the scripture says. If, you, if God put a gift in you, other people will see it and God will provide opportunities for you. As a matter of fact, what we try to do when we license somebody is to license you on the basis of what you've been doing. Not not in the hopes of what you're going to do, but what you have already demonstrated. So God's got a gift in you. He will open up opportunities for you to do that. And that's important. And this is also true in in the arena of transition. Whatever God wants you to do, he will make an opportunity for you to do it. If, you, if God wants you to start a business that's going to be such a great business, somebody will want what you're selling. Yes, sir. They want what you're selling on a part-time basis. <laughs> if ain't nobody buying it and you're doing it part-time, ain't nobody going to buy it when you do it full-time. Y'all not, y'all, y'all can't, y'all can't handle the truth. He opens up opportunities. He, oh, he makes a way for you to be able to do it. A man's gifts to make room for him. And it brings before great people, great men. God will open up the opportunities in the door for you to do something. The gifting and the anointing that God puts on you, it's a sign that this is what he wants you to do. When he in fact have, you have opportunities to do it. Before you do anything, see that God is providing you with clear direction. That's what God's telling you to do. Are y'all listening to me today? Did y'all get those three points? Stand on your feet. I'm finished. Amen for the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Did that help anybody here today? Did anybody? It's my prayer. Because I believe some of you have probably quit your jobs prematurely. What's great about the God that we serve is He's a God of a second chance. If you repent, he'll give you another chance. Some of you have missed out. You've missed out on God. Some of you have moved and acted prematurely. But I believe God will give you another chance and another opportunity. I believe he'll open up doors. He'll forgive you. And the great thing about serving the God we serve is that even if right now you're not connected with him relationally, 
the fact that you're here today is an indication that he's given you another chance to get right with him. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the great news is Jesus came and died on the cross so that we could have a relationship with him. And God knows you're here. God knows some of you are watching online that you have not made a commitment to Jesus Christ. You have not accepted him as your savior. But today he wants you to be forgiven. He wants you to have a relationship with him. If you're online, there's a number for you to call, an email for you to send an email, a button for you to click. If you're in this building, I want to invite you to get out of your seat. Don't be ashamed or embarrassed and come right down here to this altar right here. Meet me down here right now and say, you know what? I want to get right with God. I want a relationship with him. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to have fellowship with God. If you're unsaved, come. If you're backslidden, you know you're not walking with God like you're used to. Right now is the time to come. Amen. Come. If you're unsure, come. So proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you. Amen. So proud of you. Amen. So proud of you. but you don't have a church. This is a great church for you to be a part of. Let me invite you to say, you know what? I want to be a member of the First Baptist Church. I see you. Come on. Somebody else, come on right now, right this moment. In the name of Jesus. How you doing? Come so proud of you. Right, come right now. So proud of you, man. God bless you.
Wow, give the Lord a shout for all these souls here today. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to They've been trained and praying for you, especially for today. So they're going to take you to a room and sit down and they're going to minister to you, talk to you, give you some instructions, pray with you, share some scriptures with you. From this day forward, your life is never going to be the same again. Amen. And I'm excited for you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these who've come today. I know you love each of them. You care about them, and I pray that you fill them with your spirit. Let their faith be extended to, toward you. Let them have a heart of repentance. Let them be in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen.